It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. It's been maybe about a week since Kaz and Cat's demotion uh, from the regular, the tournament proper to the loser's bracket. I want to I wanna stress that she's not out yet. She's not out of the running. She could still come back in. There's actually two slots that are going to come back into the um, semifinals from the loser's bracket. So all these people who seem to be gone may not be gone she still has a chance but it was still a hard thing for me to take um her sudden departure like i think i've said i calculated she she's been with me for sorry it's hard she's been with me for about five months now and um i've been trying to work through things uh my therapy or whatever you want to call it um kind of came to a head today when I finished my very first 1,000 piece puzzle. Um, it, and it was only missing one piece. Uh, through, I'm not going to take blame for that either. It's just was missing a piece. doesn't matter why that piece was missing, but it wasn't there and that's okay. You can just accept it. I still feel like I accomplished that puzzle even though I only put in 999 pieces and not 1,000. But it was a beautiful thing. It was, um, it had a frame, kind of a... Uh, you know, like a bar frame, but um, a very subtle frame, like thin, you know. And uh, it had uh, just different shades of gray and brown and then some grass in the frame. And then it, it had four different images um, in these kind of like, you know, fat bars uh, that, that the puzzle featured of different animals of African origin. So there was a lion with a baby lion. Um, a lioness, I guess, would be the technical term, but I don't, I don't know how useful it is to have like male and female terms. But it didn't have the mane, so I figured it was a lioness. A giraffe, um, which is always nice. A zebra, which I started with, was kind of my starting focus after I got the frame done because the stripes uh, were easier to pick out. Uh, for some reason, the coloration of the puzzle it was sometimes hard to tell what was giraffe, what was lion, and what was elephant because the final was an elephant, and I put it all together, and the elephant had an elephant baby. And I'm not sure if female elephants have tusks or not. I want to say they do, but it had tusks, um, the male elephant. So I did that, and I feel like I'm, I'm ready to come back to it now. It's exciting stuff ahead. I mean, there's there's two new counter sets, so we're going to have, you know, more people jumping on, um, jumping on more, um, excuse me, more empires starting. We're going to have fewer players, so play might actually go faster uh, with fewer players. There's fewer steps I have to engage in. And, um, and yeah, I'm just really excited to get back to the game. So as we look out over our map, um, I'll just gonna, I'm just going to kind of scan back and forth mindlessly while I talk because I've just decided on a rules change. Um, I think the seed for this was planted earlier this morning. I've been watching uh, Rocking Horse Dreams um, Duel of Ages instructional videos that Zotsman got him to do and um, really made me, one, want to play that game again, but also um, consider how the, the, the leaders haven't really had too much of an impact on this game. So I'm going to make a slight change. I don't want to, I want to be careful. I don't want them to have, you know, be the main focus, but I want them to, to feel more like, a, you know, a, at least somewhere close to a third of the game rather than right now I would say there may be five percent of the game. They really only came in a couple times. They've, they've, Bet, you know they've given us a few points on the board but not really much haven't really done much um, and so what I'm gonna do is the only change I'm gonna make is when a player the player can just decide to have to use them in a given round uh, or a given phase so they you know so a flicker here is with the Syracusians and the Syracusians decide to maneuver flicker doesn't have to maneuver or if the Syracusians decide to produce flicker can decide you know instead during the maneuver phase to maneuver um, so you know they'll because oftentimes it's not I mean most of what they do is during the maneuver phase and uh, unless they're they're helping their empire and just using their their small square ability um, 
and so as such they're oftentimes not really doing anything because you you would need to maneuver a number of sub, you know times in a row in order for them to get anywhere another change I could make is I could just change the amount of spaces they could move um, but I kind of like that they that people have a chance to respond and react to them so say you have a leader here they can't just immediately like get to here in a turn, you know, they have to actually be traveling there and commit to it. So I think I'm just going to allow them to do whatever they want every single turn. Um, maybe I'll even just do a leader phase. That might even be easier than trying to remember who acted when. Yeah, and since they're leaders, they should go first. Yeah, so that's what we'll do. We'll do a seven. I kind of don't like that in some ways because it's, it's, divide, it's dividing the games up when you're trying to integrate them, but oh well. We'll do a Seven Wonders type of phase where they pick their culture card, a leader phase where the leaders lead the way, and then and then we'll do the our standard phases here, one through seven. Okay, the camera seems to be working. I just dropped it uh, in some little black piece chipped off, so um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. It's not like I'm in a tunnel trapped somewhere, but the camera couldn't, maybe won't upload. Maybe I won't be able to get the computer in order to upload it. It's really scary. That's not what I wanted to talk to you about, though. I made another change in how I want to do the leaders, and I think I'm going to go back and have them go in the traditional seven ages phase. I just didn't like having them isolated. I want to have them move with everyone else. But I'm going to do a little twist. Okay, so they can either move when their empires that they're attached to move and do whatever action they do, or the players can um, put their little, well, obviously not that one, start empire, but they can put their little um, markers on the people. So it'll be integrated with everything else. So then, you know, if you want your your leader from one empire to maneuver but you don't want that empire to maneuver you can do that but then you're you're using your maneuver chit. Before I continue with play I wanted to point out we're still on the cusp of change we just had a big change with the loss of Kaz and Kat but we're right here we're uh, you know if, if Runt progresses again we've entered into the third age not only that um, but the players have used up all their seven wonders cards so we're about to be dealt new ones I don't think they can get the purple cards yet, though, until we get into age three. So it's going to depend on whether or not Runt advances at the end of this turn. Uh, it doesn't look like she chose to, to trade with the Amazons, but if someone else does, then she'll advance, go into age three, and then we'll see some, we'll, we'll see some purple, purple cards. Purple's a nice color. Um, actually, when I finished that puzzle, I... I inducted myself into the violet level of the puzzle dojo that I run. So that was pretty, that's the, the highest level. So it's pretty great. So the turn's going to start with Little Red. Um, and turn order is incredibly important here. I'm going to have to look to see if anyone has the Oi, It's My Go card because then they'd probably want to use it. The uh, reason why it's so important is because there's those counter sets, those nice blue counter sets, and someone may or may not be able to start an empire. So Little Red's going to have the first shot at it. If he doesn't have any empires, though, that's a trouble. That's a trouble for him. Trouble. Super sad to be Little Red. All of his empires are era three or or later, so he can't actually. He's just like one away, so close from getting one of those blue chits, and it would be nice for him. He right now is in contention for last place. He might, have, yeah, he is in last place. Um, I think I decided this is going to be the next cutoff point. So when a marker gets here, whoever's in last place is, we're going to have another elimination. So that's tough for him. Another tough incident for Run. She's starting the Japanese, which is a is a, de a very decent um, empire. I mean, they can run the whole time. Lots of different point scoring. Um, Decent, you know, good starting money. Ships are cheaper. Oh, yeah, right. Treat all areas as fertile for urbanization. That's huge. But unfortunately for her, Milky has this card, and he's going to play it because she's the, the big dog. It's the shooting star. This is tough for Milky because it, it does have the great library. 
on it as well, and he's not going to be able to use that. But the shooting star makes it so that her star empire doesn't work. Ooh, that's rough. So then that's going to give it to Flush. And we'll see if Flush has one. I haven't thought that far ahead. Really bad news for Giraffe. Um, Flush got the Guptas. The Guptas are these fellas here. That's their card anyway. And they start in India and also score in India. So she has some competition, which is unfortunate. Not a bad thing for Flush, though. He's going to have two empires that can link up here. And then his Syracusians are still kind of off alone. Um, Gupta's interesting thing about them, they start at the same progress level as the leader. So he's already way up here, almost in era three with those Guptas. Um, so since they're such a high progress level, he was able to get some good strong units in there, much stronger than what um, Giraffe has available to her. Um, she can get them though. She produces this turn. And that's not her plan. Her plan is to trade. Oops. So Melky's still full. Remember, three empires is our limit. So he's not going to be able to start one. That's going to bring it back to Cowboy. I was thinking Cowboy kind of got ripped off in terms of turn order. Well, not ripped off, but it seemed unfortunate uh, that he was going to miss out. Uh, There's a comment I made last time. However, because he's going to be starting, I'm going to have to rearrange because this is just too, too crowded over here. I'm sorry, Flesh, you're going to have to move southward, and I'm going to have to stick someone else up there. I hate rearranging. Sometimes I enjoy it. It's, i got to get the bug. I don't have a rearranging bug, but I'm going to do it. There, doesn't that look nice? A Republican once told me I clean up well. Um, so... Cowboy is starting the Han. This is super exciting, super big twist. The Han started in Shenzi, which is the capital of Flush's Chi'in. They're going to win this fight. There's no way they can't. I mean, look at look at all these horsey guys against just this horsey guy in a fort. They do have a mountain advantage, which should which could help. I don't know. I'll have to work it out, but I still think Cowboy's probably going to take it. If he does, it's going to wreck this capital which will make the Chi'in lose all their money and I don't know what happened with the money situation here it's all messy but maybe I had a stack of zeros that seems the most likely that got cascaded I don't know I'm just gonna play it they you know those who got bumped ahead they got a windfall not a plus hundred windfall but they got you know a little bit extra money that's fine well we're okay with that there we go all right Time quick. So, got to do this fight. Um, likely going to be that the Han are going to be able to sweep through China. One reason you don't want to hold on to um, you don't want to hold on to empires in the standard game is they can get well behind in progress, especially since we, we're not having the free progress unless you have a science advantage. Um, you know, but one of these young upstarts can come in a whole age ahead of you with much stronger units available and just wipe you out. Um, that might be offset a bit because the the Chi'in have this, this cultural heritage that can help them. Unfortunately, Flush does not have a card, a fighty card that would help him. He has more shields than the Han, right? So he could, he could put, if he had the right card, he could maybe win this fight and make the Hans a non-starter. They would just have never, never have gotten off the ground. But as is, because he doesn't have that card, I think he can probably, I don't know, it's going to be a, a contest in China. I like the symmetry of this, and I did not know this was going to happen. Um, you know, Cowboy gets, or sorry, Flesh gets the first new empire, starts it in India, is bumping off the, the, um, the giraffe hegemony in India, and then Cowboy is going to be turning around and doing the same thing in China. Now when I say bump enough, I don't think he's totally going to consume India from Giraffe, but they're definitely going to be in conflict, which makes India a lot less um, attractive to Giraffe's Harappans, right? Because, you know, she's only scoring one off of holding it, and it's maybe not worth even trying. It's not, a, it's not that the Harappans aren't a huge scoring country, but they're going to get a bonus, actually, from their democracy because they lost a, lost territory. Um, I think it's a production bonus. So if she decides to produce next turn, which is good, that's going to be cheaper for her. All right, I have a I have a combat to roll up on this combat results table. Gone around and done production. This is going very slow, I have to tell you. Partially I'm distracted. There's a lot of other things going on. 
right now, but partially just because it's going slow. I, I don't know. Um, it's probably more distraction than anything, but I, I might have to break this, this turn up into a couple sessions. I'll do it all in one video uh, for you, but so you know, if things like jump ahead or my mood seems to shift hugely, it's because um, a, a large amount of objective time for me has passed in between filmings. But anyway, I'll get to the, the point. We've done production. There's a couple of three interesting notes in production that I wanted to bring out. One is um, Runt's Amazonians have produced as much as they can produce. She's even just dumping money on forts because she's just produced all of her units until she gets to... 20, space 23, which is right here. I doubt she'll have the Amazonians then. I mean, she used all of that. It, of course, things can start dying, right? And that's really what she needs to do is maybe start fighting with them, doing something with them, or she could just sit on them and collect four points every turn. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's... I, I won't go into her strategic options, but that's one interesting point. Um, another interesting point is the Irish they produced. They're like pulling in nothing, you know. It's really it's it's going to be slow going for them, if it weren't for the fact that they were Milky's high scorer. I think he might consider getting rid of them, especially since they need to become Christians. In order to do that, they need to be um, within range of um, of Flush's uh, Syracusans there, because they're the Christian Empire, and then he can pick up Christianity from them, and then he needs to expand further than than Flush's group. Um, there's a chance of that. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, the other thing is I decided to, you know, as part of my push to kind of make the Duel of Ages leaders a little more prominent, um, I changed my production rules. I made it a little less stringent. It's basically a, a buck for a card draw. That's all it is, production. Um, so we're going to see them having more cards, which will give them a little bit more options and make things, uh, I think, closer to the game. If you can get more cards, it's more like it would actually be in the game. So, you know, oftentimes there'll be character... Uh, the, the game Duel of Ages, they'll have characters that are good at melee, and they're generally better when before people get cards, right? But then once cards start coming out, it, it helps the people who are better with guns. Um, I don't know. Maybe this unbalances it. I'm not sure. Uh, but since it's so kind of random and it's harder to trade cards, you're not going to have a whole group of people that you can draw cards from to trade, you know, to get the right weapons to the people. I think it'll, I think it'll still balance out better. I don't know. We'll see. Just finished our trade in progress, and I thought I'd talk a little bit about that because there was some stuff that happened, and it's a, it's a place where I've monkeyed with the base game. So one thing with Seven Ages is w when you trade with a, um, another empire that also has trade as their selected action, they lose that action. Since I've really um, halted the general progress due to the science thing, um, and just because I've done away with that rule. So people can really trade a lot more and progress a lot more as a result. So what we saw that time was the Saxons and the early Finns, both the kind of minor, somewhat minority in the, the European conflagration, um, traded with each other a lot. Uh, so they both jumped up ahead. That's huge for the Saxons, because if you recall, the Saxons have some abilities that get unlocked in age 2, so now they're there. They actually went up four spaces that turn. So that's noteworthy. Um, and the early Finns also got a good jump. Um, so they're going to start being able to produce some stronger units, and maybe have a chance of actually scoring some points in, in Europe. A lot depends, however, on these Amazonians and the Romans. They're both big forces, big, big forces. Uh, but they're getting older, you know, and it might be time for them to move on. We'll see. We'll see. Um, like we said, Runt's uh, Amazons are very vulnerable to god attacks, um, you know, the, the cards. What else happened? Um, the Harappans jumped way far ahead. Um, well, not way far ahead, but they jumped up here. A giraffe is our science leader, so she is going to be going into to age three next turn. Um, that's gonna that's gonna change things somewhat. We're gonna get to to bring in those purple cards. We're gonna have a nice big stack. We're gonna have all the seven wonders cards to work with, which will be great. Um, there was something else I was gonna say. What was it in relation to? Oh yeah, 
So you know how we had that switcho thing where we had two new empires? Well, it turns out that both empires they were infringing on had selected to trade. So here they, these big, um, these these upstarts have jumped in in both of these these areas where they're kind of complacent, I think, complacent bureaucracies perhaps because they haven't had anyone to really struggle with. And what do they do? They decide to go to a swap meet. There's something poignant about that. We're in the midst of the maneuver phase. We've had a couple leaders uh, fail at this challenge. Coliseum free for all. Runt lost a leader. Um, Ron and Sajiro, who should have had a great shot at it, only squeaked it. Um, technically, I guess if you lose that challenge, you're dead. So she lost hers. But the squeak, uh, you know, because it's a free for all last man standing. So I, I'm going to rule that Ron and Sajiro, since he squeaked, um, didn't actually die. He just fell down and then got back up later on or something. Um, so that was that was some fun stuff. Um, the Syracusians are going into the peninsula here. This is going to be interesting. Now that um, the pirate the pirate state is gone, there is probably going to be a clash here between giraffe and um, flush over this territory. It's a nice bit of territory, especially for sea power, because it's going to um, allow them uh, control over the Strait of Gibraltar. Um, but the real reason I'm filming is not to talk about that stuff, but to talk about a rather weird thing that um, Melky is doing with Princess Sunglow. Um, he sent the princess from here. He's using the his maneuver action just on Princess Sunglow. Um, down here to Sir, Go Sir Gawain. Now, Sir Gawain can't attack Princess Sunglow because he's um, honorable, I think. Yeah. Um, and she can't attack him either. But what she can do is if she's in the same space as him, um, put him on her side permanently. So what she had to do was start a combat with him. And I'm not actually playing out the combat. Just because it's a lot of setup for something that feels like a foregone conclusion. She's faster than Sir Gawain. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of, I, I like the story better that the princess just woos the knight. Um, I don't, I don't really want to do a whole tactical map for it because he doesn't really have any other options other than to run away. And we've already done something like that, it's just a, like a chasey thing. So I'm going to just rule that it works. Um, Sir Gawain has now joined um, these guys, except the Babylonians, they have a leader cap of two. So I'm going to say she just convinces him to be gone. Um, I don't really like leader caps. I like it when people can keep getting guys. That's the that's the fun thing about Duel of Ages is getting more and more guys. All right, I'm really getting tired of this combat results table, but I'm not. I don't have time to come up with something else to do. When, what I don't like about it is that it has these upper numbers that I feel like these are important. Um, but there's I don't have a, I haven't come up with a way to give bonuses and penalties so that those numbers can happen. Maybe I should do something with terrain and leadership for that. Um, but again, I'm kind of running short on time, and I want to at least get through a turn today. Um, all right. So interesting thing, giraffe did. She's sticking her neck out again because she's going to have a 50-50 a chance of winning this fight. But she's sending. She's going. Blitzkrieg right down into the peninsula, trying to take Portugal right here. This is going to give her, um, if she wins, she's going to have ownership over this this side of the, the sea, and so she can have her little boats there. Um, she couldn't, she can't move a boat there right now because, well, she could, but if she didn't, if she doesn't manage to take this, she would lose it. You have to have that boat adjacent to a land area that you control. So um, she went in there with Spartacus. Just because Spartacus is an explorer and that lets the army move an extra space. Um, there's also this Ranyan here. Spartacus, she was going to maybe have Spartacus try and take the Ranyan on. Ranyan and Sejiro, they're similar in fighting ability. Spartacus would be better if he had weapons, but he doesn't. Um, so even without weapons, I think he's normally better. However, she used her oracle. She has an oracle in... Um, 
think under here, yep, she's using Oracle to see what card he has. And it turns out it's a gun. <laughs> so it's like a laser gun that that Roundin could use to blast Spartacus before it even got to him. So uh, Spartacus evaded the Roundin. They didn't do a fight. He stayed with the army. Um, and it's just going to be a straight up army fight. I think if they lose, oh, I'll give Spartacus a a chance to escape. Same with the Rhinon. But it's straight up. I mean, there it's one to one. So let's go to the CRT that I want to adjust. And here we go. Now, Giraffe has a little bit of an advantage because she has more forces. So but we'll see. Two, that's not good for her. E, that's the, yep. Yeah. So all of her guys die. And then three fourths of the defender's guy, which is going to round up to one. That's where her advantage of having more forces comes in. So one guy dies. She loses all her guys. Um, and then Spartacus, I guess we'll see if we'll see if they can get out. Yeah, we'll do a wits check, and it'll be a simple one, I think. It's not too not too hard to get out of things if you're Spartacus or stealth. Stuff. We'll do stealth and gotta get blah blah blah. Yeah. And we'll see if the running gets it. What's the running stealth? Running Sajiro. This stuff is also good. So it's like a nine or better. Yeah. Alright, so they both they're both there alone in this this empty city. Everyone's dead. Um the rules state that the city should be gone, but I like the idea of ghost towns that you can re-inhabit, so I'm leaving them. Same with forts, too. I think those forts are supposed to go away, but I'm keeping them. My prerogative. In the midst of the civilization phase, civilized phase, Cowboy is hitting Little Red with something rather big. So Little Red's champs here, they score two points for having the most money, and they do right now, but he just hit him with a currency crisis, the Phoenicians. And the Phoenicians, you know, they're right with the gods there. Um, so that's 66 bucks all going down the tubes. You know, you can't save for a rainy day when the rainy day is a flood. <sighs> Another thing that happened during that civilized action, that civilized phase, was um, Gregory had a civilized chit placed on him. That, I ruled that that lets you, one, you can use items. There's a few instances where you can use items on the big map. Not many. Not many. Um, the main thing you can do is you can play um, cards just on the spot that you're in. So Gregory's right there. He just he played a just ruler on himself and Confucianism on the empire he's in. Uh, that's part of a suicide move, really. He, he did it because he got a couple of victory points for Melky. Um, Melky is discarding the Babylonians. This is a rich, rich culture that has, you know, really built itself up a lot over the game, um, but it's just not scoring any points. And so Melky is saying so long, and so must we all. The Babylonians are going away. That's going to free up a lot of artifacts for people to take. Um, and it's going to free up some space here. It's going to take some heat off of cowboys, uh, Phoenicians there. That might make him want to keep them a bit longer. And that'll end the round and bring us into age three, or at least the Harappans anyway. They're, they're sitting in the Dark Age, age three. Uh, these Dark Ages mean they're, they can only advance due to trading. They can't advance due to science. I might reverse it. Ah, uh, no, no, that would be too, too difficult for people. Never mind. Yeah, they can't, they can only advance due to trading, not through science. Um, in the regular game, you don't get an auto advance, which everyone gets in the regular game. In our game, only the people who are leading in science points, which is currently giraffe. So that's where we are on the progress scale. On the glory track, um, Flush is still, he's, once again, it's like deja vu. It's a time ripple. Flush is fighting for the back end, <laughs> fighting to stay above water. Um, if he hadn't demolished uh, two of, he, he took out two of Little Red's points by getting rid of that score. Or actually, no, he didn't do that. Cowboy did that, right? 
I don't, well, whoever did it. Whoever did that, that was helpful for Flush, um, because that made it so Little Red and Flush are both only getting two points. Flush is just in front of them. Who has a better scoring potential? I don't know. Um, by losing his homeland, the, the Chin actually get negative one. If you don't have your homeland, you have that homeland symbol, you lose one. Uh, so they netted zero. Um, the Guptans, if he can take India, that would be good. Um, they're not, but the most they're going to be able to net him is two. And then the Syracuse, yeah, he's got a lot of low scores. That's going to be tough for Flush. If we look at Little Red, Little Red is inhibited by only having um, two empires. He's not going to probably get another one anytime soon. The Chams are scoring two, and that's a solid two. He's probably not going to lose those. And the Saxons, they're, well, I guess if he can get to Britain now. I don't know. I think Little Red might have a, might have a chance of of retaking the, well, the lead in front of Flush anyway. Um, what else happened? Uh, Giraffe is scoring about as much as Runt. Runt's, Runt's Amazons lost their progress point that they were getting, so she scored eight. Giraffe scored seven. They're, they're very close. Melky's only scoring two now. He lost his Babylonians, which were pulling in one. No, he's scoring three, sorry. Um, so he's getting early fins in the Irish there. Yeah, kind of weak. Um, and Cowboy, he's pulling in a decent five. Being the only one in the new world is really paying off for him. That's three points right there. So pretty good. Things are changing, though. India, China, those are going to be both interesting conflicts. An interesting conflict here. And then we have these two big empires struggling for Europe. And they're not the only ones involved, which I love. I like it when there are more than two sides. We have these Finns who could do something surprising soon, you know. People are just kind of ignoring them up there. Um, and then we're also seeing there there has been a lot more activity with leaders, which is, is going to be changing things. be interesting to see what happens next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitary Mega Tournament. Pope Leg. Not Animal Farm. This is 7x7 seven seven Ages. Pay attention.